I can't breathe in this thing. Good morning, good evening, or something in between. And welcome back to our final installment of Don't Mess With The Mouse, Part 4, The Power of the Yes Key. We save the most versatile, most powerful, and simplest tool to use in our final episode. In Part 4, I'm going to show you that there is a new hope to getting your job done. So your keyboard strikes back with this handy shortcut and you will have a return of efficiencies and we can build a model in less than 12 parsecs. So here goes. Stay in place, stay safe, sound familiar? There is no need to use toolbars. I'm a big believer in not having to whip my hand back and forth, not only with my mouse, but also with my keyboard. And my most used keyboard function, and this is like the end all be all of keyboard commands, is the handy dandy S key. Helping you jump from light speed directly to ludicrous speed. The S key does not stand for sketch. The S key stands for shortcut. This command can be used for all four locations, just like the mouse gestures. So how does the S key work? I hit S and I see a rectangle command to draw. I hit S and I see a circle command, once again sketching the circle. The shortcut tool holds many of the commands you need and as you can see, I can quickly and easily go in and sketch my needed feature profile. I love using the S key. In the matter of fact, when I design or teach, it is the only command that I ever use whenever I'm building a project. Why? Because it is so versatile. As you can see, this is an image of the standard out of the box S key toolbar. But you can see my options inside of the sketch toolbar are not just sketching. I can add any command inside the S key environment. You can see I added boss and cut to my toolbar. It is very editable, 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 editable. It is highly customizable. So how do I customize this toolbar? Again, I hit the S key with any file type open inside of SolidWorks. A right mouse button to customize. You can also do this by right clicking in any toolbar area and select customize like we did in episode three mouse gestures. Here you will notice shortcuts for our four environments. Here I'm going to activate the shortcut icon to display a preview of the shortcut window. In the list of toolbars, I search features and I find boss and the cut icon and I simply drag and drop them. And this is how I add feature commands to the sketch shortcut. The reason why I love the S key there's no limitation to the number of commands that can be added. Unlike mouse gestures, which has a limitation of 12 commands, the S key window will stretch to accommodate your needs when you add more. And I have seen customer shortcut windows this big. Let's look at how versatile the shortcut actually is. We're going to go over the fundamentals of the S key and show how it's used. The first thing we want to do is open a new file. This could be a part, an assembly, or a drawing. Here I opened a part, hitting the S key on my keyboard to open the shortcut menu. Then I right click inside the menu and select customize. 
and this takes me to my shortcut page. Here we see our four environments. Let's select the sketch toolbar. This is the one that I'm going to be using the most. Then I go to my icon page and I find the toolbar for features. This is where I can add any command by simply dragging and dropping it to place it anywhere inside the toolbar. And I added my boss and my cut commands. Well, let's not stop there. Another command that I use quite a bit is my revolve. So I'm going to find the icon and drag and drop. You can see how the window automatically expands to accommodate for these added functions. Then we select OK. After creating a brand new sketch, I'm going to hit S, corner rectangle. Click the origin, drag and space, let go. S, draw my circle. S, trim, trim my geometry. S, smart dimension. Click on the top line, the bottom line, and place my value. And I want to click the midpoint of the arc. Click the bottom line here and place my value. Type it in. Click the top line, place my value, and type. Select the top point of the arc, and now the arc's bottom. Once again, place my value. Notice, never once did I hit the escape key. S key. Next, my centerline command. Picking the origin, dragging straight up in the air past my model, and let go. S, smart dimension. Picking the line and the centerline and not its endpoint and place my dimension 25. Another S key and I have my boss extrude. Right click in space and I can now select mid plane. Type in my value 25, green check. I'm going to start a new sketch. S key, let's select convert, then grab the line I want. Now change it into a center line. S, revolve. When you get this warning, just say okay. We'll talk about this later. Let's type in our value of 90 degrees. We'll do the same on the other side. Start a new sketch, S, convert, grab the line and change it into a center line. Again, S, revolve, revolve the sketch, type in a value of 90 degrees. When I'm done, I hit S and select mirror. Now here, I have to do the zigzag to get to the bodies to mirror option. Pick on the body, green check. Select the top face, start a new sketch. S key, circle. Go to the origin, pick and drag. S, smart dimension. Pick the circle, place the dimension for the diameter. Now we're done. So, S key, cut. Come over here, pick on that point and select cut up to vertex, green check. In part modeling, S, fill it. Grab the edge, type in the value, select the second edge, use the selection toolbar to grab multiple edges. Green check and I'm done. Okay, let's go over some tricks that I did during the presentation. Dimensioning to a midpoint. I slowed the video down a bit so you can see this better. With the dimension tool turned on, I hover over the arc. This will give me the ability to select a midpoint. SOLIDWORKS gives us the ability to select midpoints on geometry. By picking on the midpoint and picking the line, I take my mouse and place my value. I can now set that to a value of four giving me the tangent to tangent dimension. Doubled dimensions. This comes into play when using the center line. Here I hit the S key. I go to my line drop down menu and activate the center line command. Drawing a center line from the origin all the way up beyond my existing sketch geometry. This way my center line is visible so I can select it later. Once I'm done with that, I go to my S key and I activate my Smart Dimension tool. I want to grab the overall value because the model is going to be mirrored from one side to the other and there is nothing on the other side that represents this total value. To capture this, I grab the line, but I cannot grab the endpoint of the center line. What I need to do is select the center line itself. I drag my mouse to the opposite side, then place my dimension value. I can now type the 25 for the overall size of my model. Contour converted to construction. So we don't need to do this one to revolve, but sometimes this is a handy tool to know. Here I pick on the face and I use my S key to convert entities. I pick on the line that I want to use as my axis of revolution. 
I'm going to select Construction Geometry. This also gives me the ability of using the doubled dimension if I ever need to. What was the warning dialog box that we saw earlier when we revolved the geometry? When I grabbed that line and I changed it to Construction, technically this sketch is an open loop. The revolve feature is looking for a completely closed loop sketch. So this is saying, hey, your sketch is open, would you like me to close it? SOLIDWORKS doesn't rebuild it, what it's going to do is draw a line from open point to open point closing the sketch. How do we change the dialog box for the depth of the hole? We built the sketch circle and the dimension using the S key, typing the needed value for the diameter. We know this cut needs to go to the same depth as the top of the bubble portion of the model. I open my cut command. I simply come over to the vertex at the top of the bubble and select it. This is going to automatically switch the dialog box from blind to up to vertex. I wait and I hit the right mouse button to green check and I'm done. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Get back to work. Go on, get back to work.